Welcome to the Essential Micronutrients Lecture that is part of our nutrition series. Nutrition matters for quality of life and overall health, yet there is a clear disconnect between nutrition science and what consumers eat. In a 2018 report from the U.S. Burden of Disease Collaborators, poor diet was indicated as a leading cause of death, and in 2020, it was listed as a primary risk factor in cardiovascular disease. The knowledge gap on nutrition isn't exclusive to the general population, as a 2018 survey revealed that 73% of physicians felt they received minimal or no education necessary for counseling patients on nutrition topics. This video provides an introduction to essential micronutrients and their relevance to clinical practice. We'll briefly go over the six essential micronutrients identified by the CDC. Summary of the clinical consequences of essential micronutrient deficiencies and recommended sources of essential micronutrients. Essential micronutrients are vitamins and minerals that are needed in small amounts and are not produced by the body. These six essential micronutrients of concern were identified by the CDC for optimal health among vulnerable populations and they are iron, vitamin A, vitamin D, iodine, folate, and zinc. Let's look at our first essential micronutrient, iron. Iron is primarily known for making hemoglobin, but it is also crucial for cognitive development, motor skills, and the creation of some hormones. Iron deficiency varies across populations, but is more common among women. The prevalence among menstruating women has been reported as high as 65%. Other populations at high risk include pregnant women, infants, frequent blood donors, cancer patients, those with gastrointestinal disorders, and those with heart failure. The effects of iron deficiency have a wide range including microcytic hypochromic anemia, fatigue and weakness, pica, restless leg syndrome, beecheria, dilutional anemia, particularly in pregnant women. And for infants, the effects include delayed psychological development, social withdrawal and attention deficits, now let's learn about Roxanne. Her story is one that is common among patients with iron deficiency, and you might see someone like her in your practice. I was always feeling tired, and my doctor told me it was because of my heavy period. During my pregnancy, I never had this issue. My doctor informed me this was likely because I took prenatal vitamins, which gave me healthy amounts of iron. I started taking iron supplements, and I felt less tired as when taking it regularly, but I also started to feel constipated all the time. I was finally put on birth control and that reduced my heavy periods, but I still needed iron supplementation. Iron supplements can be beneficial to patients. Sources of iron aside from supplements include lean meat, seafood, poultry, iron-fortified breakfast cereals and bread, white beans, kidney beans, lentils, spinach, peas, nuts, and some dried fruit. Spinach contains one of the highest amounts. On the iron menu, you can see some simple suggestions that can be made to patients for getting iron throughout the day. Vitamin A is our next essential nutrient, and its main role includes helping eyesight and immune system functions. In the U.S., populations vulnerable to vitamin A deficiency include those who have undergone bariatric surgery because vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. Those who suffer from fat malabsorption due to cystic fibrosis, pancreatic insufficiency, celiac disease, and cholestatic liver disease. The clinical consequences of vitamin A deficiency mainly appear as eye diseases including pathologic dryness of the conjunctiva and cornea, xerosis, and night blindness. Other symptoms can include poor bone growth, hyperkeratosis, follicular hyperkeratosis, and impairment of phagocytes and T cells. Now let's meet Dylan. I had been struggling with weight loss for a while when my doctor prescribed a medication to help. The medication didn't help me lose the weight, and I soon started having issues with my eyes. I didn't think much of it until the option of bariatric surgery was brought up 
and my doctor explained more about what could happen regarding vitamin A. I wish my doctor had told me more about the risks when I started taking the medication. But we're on track to correct that now. I started taking vitamin A supplements and my doctor told me to eat vitamin-rich foods. There are two forms of vitamin A, preformed, which is retinol, and provitamin A, which is beta-carotene. Preformed vitamin A can be found in liver, fish, eggs, and dairy products. Provitamin A can be found in leafy greens, oranges, yellow vegetables, tomatoes, fruits, and vegetable oils. It's important to note that vitamin A from animal sources is more likely to cause overdose as opposed to plant sources. On the vitamin A menu, you can see some simple suggestions for patients dealing with this deficiency. It is important to note that periodic supplementation is also recommended. Our third essential micronutrient is vitamin D. This micronutrient is special in that it can be produced in the body when UVB radiation interacts with epidermal and dermal cells, but it can also be found in foods and supplements. Vitamin D is vital for absorption of calcium in the body, but it also plays a role in resisting bacteria and viruses, regulating blood sugar levels, and muscle and nerve function. The clinical consequences of vitamin D can go unnoticed as the majority of those affected are asymptomatic. That said, this deficiency can lead to hypoglycemia, which leads to hyperparathyroidism, which in turn leads to demineralization in bones. This rapid bone loss can have symptoms of bone pain, fractures, difficulty moving, and eventually lead to osteoporosis or rickets in children. I work an office job on the East Coast. I'm usually in the office before the sun goes up and I'll stay until after it's gone down. I started feeling pain in my knees and slowly it progressed to the point where I finally went to see my doctor. She tested me for serum 25 hydroxyvitamin D and it turned out I had a severe deficiency. I can't change the fact that I rarely see the sun, but I've started getting better since taking vitamin D supplements. Vitamin D3, or colciferol, is the preferred form if supplementation is indicated. A meta-analysis of seven randomized trials showed colciferol increases serum-25-hydroxyvitamin D more efficiently than ergocalciferol. There are a limited amount of food options that contain vitamin D naturally but it can be found in fatty fish like trout, salmon, mackerel, and tuna. Dairy products and cereals are good options as well, since they are often fortified with vitamin D. This vitamin D menu has some meal suggestions to kickstart a patient's intake. Essential micronutrient number four is iodine. Iodine is a mineral needed to make thyroid hormones, and it also plays a role in bone development, cognitive development, and controlling metabolism. Groups at high risk of iodine deficiency include pregnant women in the U.S. Although it should be noted that 1.8 billion people around the world have insufficient iodine intake, iodized salt has been a widely successful intervention in treating these populations. Iodine deficiency can lead to serious issues like a decrease in ability to think clearly as well as hypothyroidism and the accompanying symptom of diffuse and nodular goiter. In pregnancy, it causes fetal hypothyroidism, mental impairment, stunted growth, delayed sexual developments, and increased neonatal and infant death. Now let's meet Vanessa who needed information on nutrition. I am planning on getting pregnant soon and I wanted to know how to prepare. During my visit, my doctor informed me of the danger of iodine deficiency and we went over prenatal supplements that contained it. I was surprised that not all prenatal vitamins had iodine and that I could be deficient. I'm glad I found out that I had to take an iodine supplement at least three months before even getting pregnant. Along with the rest of my consultation, I feel better prepared to plan for my baby. Iodine can also be found in fish, seafood, kelp, vegetables in iodine-sufficient soil, dairy from iodine-fed cows, and iodized table salt. 
The iodine menu shown here has suggestions for patients with an iodine deficiency. Our fifth essential micronutrient is folate or vitamin B9. Folate is crucial in making new cells in the body. It is a coenzyme in the synthesis of DNA and RNA and in the metabolism of amino acids. Folate is also needed for the development of the brain and spine. The populations mainly at risk for folate deficiency are pregnant women and those who suffer from malnutrition, chronic hemolytic anemia, or take part in chronic alcohol abuse. Folate deficiency can lead to megaloblastic anemia, soreness, and shallow ulcerations of the tongue, and in pregnant women can lead to neural tube defects like spina bifida. Folate can be found in spinach, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, fruits, nuts, beans, seafood, eggs, dairy, meat, poultry, and grains. While there are a variety of foods that have folate, it can be difficult to reach daily requirements with diet alone. Folate supplementation may be required, especially in pregnancy. The folate menu shows meals that are folate rich. As shown, even with a full day of these types of food, it would not be enough for pregnant or nursing mothers, which is why supplements are needed. The final essential micronutrient we will be going over is zinc. Zinc deficiency in the U.S. is not common, so it may not be suspected unless there is an underlying medical condition. Zinc is responsible for proper taste and smell. It is also responsible for catalytic activity in enzymes and helps with growth, tissue repair, wound healing, and immune response. Those most affected by zinc deficiency are those with sickle cell disease, pregnant women, or those who have an alcohol abuse disorder. Zinc deficiency can present itself in various ways depending on the severity. Mild deficiency leads to depressed immunity, impaired taste and smell, night blindness, decreased spermatogenesis, and psoriasiform dermatitis. More severe cases can lead to dermatitis with impaired wound healing, frequent infections, diarrhea, and alopecia. Let's meet Doug and his caregiver, David. His caregiver says that Doug, who is suffering from dementia, has been bedbound for the past two years. Recently, David started seeing flaking on Doug's skin that was getting worse over time with pustular lesions on his limbs. His clinician suspected that the change in David's diet could be responsible and now recommended zinc supplementation. David has noticed that Doug's skin is looking much better and they are working with a dietitian to make sure the foods he receives are rich in zinc as well. Zinc can be found in oysters, red meat, poultry, seafood, nuts, beans, dairy, fortified cereals. The zinc menu has a list of high zinc foods that can be used as suggestions to patients. To learn more about micronutrients and diet, visit nutritioncme.stanford.edu.